Hey guys, Boshit here, and welcome to part two of the Gmod Machinima tutorial series of which we are now calling Know Your Shit. What's with a sudden name change of the series, you may ask? Easy. The first name sucked and a YouTube commenter came up with a much better one and I decided to use that. I'd give him proper credit, but his comment fell way off the map before I could get the name, so... Sorry, dude. You know who you are anyway, and that's enough, right? Hope so. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get into what we'll be learning today. Ever see videos that look like this? I call this the mail slot effect, and we see it for two reasons. One is improper encoding or recording, and two, lazy editing. In this video, we're going to be tackling the former by learning the right settings for Fraps, Sony Vegas, and even Gary's Mod, so your video can look its best for the YouTube format. As for the latter category... Stop it! First, we're going to start with Fraps, since it's the quickest to set up. I do want to note that Fraps isn't the only capture software out there that can record your games. It may be one of the best, but it has close competitors, the closest of which, in my opinion, is called Marillus Action. It's easy to set up just as Fraps is, and both have their strengths and weaknesses. Action has more manageable file sizes than Fraps, but Fraps makes up for that with more superior visual quality, at least in my opinion. DX Tori is a nice one too, but for beginners, the interface is a nightmare to work with. All that said, I still prefer Fraps, so we'll be using that as this example. You're free to use the others, I just won't be covering them just yet. First thing we're going to do is go into the Movies tab. In here you can change the path of where your moving video footage is saved. For this example, my video data is being saved on my external hard drive. Next, you want your record hotkey. This specified key will start and stop the recording process as you choose. Now you have your video capture settings down here. YouTube videos do not exceed 30 frames per second on playback, so if you want to save a bit on space, set your FPS to 30. If your computer can manage it, however, you can also choose to record at 60 FPS, which I will be doing for this example. This is optional, but I do it for two reasons, which I will get into later. Over here, you will have the option of full size and half size. Half size does pretty much what it sounds like. Whatever your selected resolution is in game, Fraps will record at half that, usually for computers that are having performance issues. The result is pretty pixelated and ugly. Going on the assumption that your computer can handle at least mid-level gaming, I highly recommend full size for the best visual quality. Finally, you have sound capture settings over here. This checkbox records from your sound card. Now be careful with this because while it does record the sounds within Gary's Mod, it also records everything in between, like instant message notifications or the Skype call you might be in, which could screw up your shots. For this reason, and because I've collected a very large sound effects library, I personally just don't record sound at all and add my own in editing. Now this checkbox is used for recording your microphone for commentary purposes. There's no reason to use this feature in your Gmod Machinima because it's mostly used in case you want to stop doing anything worthwhile and just do hammed up reactionary let's plays. <laughs> you know I'm only kidding, right? <laughs> Now that we got the Movies tab set up, we'll quickly go into the Screenshots tab. Normally Gary's Mod has a tool to make screenshots, but I suggest you let Fraps handle that as well, because the quality is just better. Just pick your preferred path like before, your Screenshot hotkey, and your chosen file extension, and you're good to go. Just make sure that these activation hotkeys aren't being shared by any other tab, or you're gonna run into some problems. Before we move on, we need to set up the FPS tab briefly. Here is where you can configure the frame rate counter, which ideally will be overlaid in the corner of the screen when you open Gary's Mod in a moment. This overlay hotkey toggles what corner of the screen the counter will be on. Don't worry though, when recording, the counter will not show up in your video clips, so don't worry trying to hide it before recording. In fact, I would recommend you just don't hide it at all so you know whether or not Fraps is recording. Now, go ahead and leave Fraps running because we're gonna go ahead and configure Gary's Mod now. We'll begin with the graphics settings in the options menu. As you would imagine, we're going to be maxing out everything here. Anti-aliasing is also important because it helps blur and smooth up the edges in the game so they look a lot less jagged. 
Now comes the important part of working with the resolution. There are two kinds of resolutions that make a perfect fit in the YouTube video box. 1280 by 720, or if you have a really impressive machine, you can go up to 1920 by 1080. When deciding on using the 1080p resolution, make sure your monitor can actually support the resolution, and most importantly, make sure your computer is strong enough for Fraps to maintain a frame rate of over 30 FPS when recording. To test this, let's set the resolution to 1920 by 1080 and run a single player game. You may have noticed by now the yellow frame rate counter I mentioned earlier. If you don't see it, hit your toggle key that you set for it until you do see it. If you still don't see it, try resetting Fraps. While this counter is yellow, Fraps is currently not recording. Go ahead and hit the record hotkey, which I specified as F11. You'll notice the counter turn red and your frame rate drop to what you specified in the movies tab. I set it to 60, and you'll notice my computer is having no trouble at all maintaining this. If recording maintains 30 FPS or above, then you're good to go on using 1920 by 1080 resolution. If it doesn't, lowering the resolution to 1280 by 720 should fix that. And because this resolution can be an eye strain if you're in full screen, I recommend you set Gary's Mod to windowed mode as well. However, thanks to you guys, my computer is fine with 1080p, so we'll use this resolution as an example. Now we'll just capture some quick footage here with Fraps and move on to the settings of Sony Vegas. Now that we're here in Vegas, we're going to get started by creating a new project and setting the project properties. Basically, you're going to want your project settings to look like this. The resolution setting is obvious because I recorded Gary's mod this way. These settings over here are the ones that are necessary to fill the video field. Anything else seems to do the opposite, and honestly, I don't see the purpose in anything other than these settings. Now you'll notice that even though we recorded a clip at 60 frames per second earlier, we're still going to go with 29.97 FPS. Because, again, YouTube doesn't go over 30 frames per second, which will pose a big problem if you like working with keyframes. For those unfamiliar with keyframes, we'll get into those in separate videos. So why did I record at 60 frames per second earlier? What's the point if I'm just going to make my project work at 30 frames per second? Well, there are two reasons. First, Vegas, by default, uses a resample feature, which takes all of the extra frames normally made void by the limits of 30 frames per second and works them into a motion blur, which blends the otherwise skipped frames in, simulating a larger frame rate. It works nice in certain instances, and other longtime machinima artists like Ross Scott uses this technique for the Civil Protection series, even to this day. Certain instances, or even all of them, don't look very good with this feature though, so to switch it off, right-click on the clip in the timeline and go to Switches, and then select Disable Resample. This just hides the extra frames altogether for the clip you selected. You can even use this method when selecting multiple clips, so you don't have to right-click every single clip in your project. The other advantage to recording at 60 FPS is when you suddenly decide to make a certain shot you already have in slow motion. It happens all the time, even to me, but you would rather not open Gary's Mod back up, redo the scene all over again, and then this time remember to do it in slow motion, right? Well, by having shots at 60 frames per second, you can stretch it out a lot better, and it'll look smoother than if you were to stretch it out with 30 frames per second. Generally, if you want to go really slow, it's still a better idea to do the slow-mo shot within Gary's Mod, which we will get into later, but for now, this is a good insulary method for those like myself who get a lot of ideas during the editing phase. Our final step for this video is going to be the ever-important rendering function. This is what is going to put your entire project together into one video so you can upload it to YouTube. I'm gonna be honest with you, I still, even to this day, can't decide between the WMV and MP4 formats. I find pros and cons with both, or sometimes YouTube even decides to break one of them and fix it later. Generally, you'll want to record some short test shots so rendering doesn't take forever, and then render them and upload them to YouTube under private for testing purposes. Let's go ahead and go into File and Render As. For the WMV render, we'll select the Windows Media Video pull-down menu and highlight this particular template. Now we'll hit Customize Template and make some adjustments. This is currently my favorite render for WMV. 
This was the render I used in the Metro Last Light review, and while the size for this particular render was pretty huge, the quality was amazing. The other render is the MP4 render. I use the main concept AVC slash AAC pull down menu and work off the Internet HD 1080p template. Now we'll tweak it accordingly. Remember, feel order and pixel aspect ratio always should be set to this, no matter what render you're using, or else it won't fit the screen. Encode mode is going to depend on your processor. Mine's awesome, so I'm using this, but if you're unsure, just render in CPU only. Whether you use WMV or MP4, the choice is yours. All right, that about does it for the settings. Now that you have all this set up and everything is tested, your video should look good from a graphical standpoint. Join me next time in part three when I cover the removal of user interface elements and make your video look good from an aesthetic standpoint as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.